That is not an error on your screens. There is indeed Shaman V. He finishes throughout the course of his story, so we'll see how his story plays out this weekend. As we see the prize cards, nothing too impressive, I would say, from either player. Perhaps the energy switch at the very top for Milislav could be something that affects him throughout the game because Reggie Drago, of course, rely so much on those energy switches to get the right attacker powered up at the right time. Yeah, for Ross's deck as well, that is the, the, almost the same story. You know, Ross is using that Teal Mask Ogre Pond very similarly to how the Reggie Drago players use Teal Mask Ogre Pond. Just get energy yep. cards into play, draw extra cards. You can energy switch to make the Teal Mask Ogre Pond your attacker. And it does seem like that's actually Ross's kind of main early game attacker. So one of those being up at the top of the prize cards also potentially could be problematic. Potentially it could be thanks to the fact that Shaman, uh, Reve Shaman's Revenge Blast costs only two energies instead of three. That's actually very helpful uh, overall. And then I wanted to touch upon the synergy between the Dust Gloves and the Dust Sword with Shaman's Revenge Blast because of course, once you use the Curse Blast ability, you place those damage counters, right? And you give your opponent a prize card and Revenge Blast actually deals more damage depending on how many prizes your opponent has taken. So it's actually a Dust Gloves almost becomes a plus 90 damage modifier and a Dust Sword becomes a plus 17 damage modifier, yeah. which could be huge to reach those high HPs that Radio Drago V-Star has. Looking over at Miloslav's list here, there's really nothing super unique. It's a pretty standard Reggie Drago deck. And looking at what some of the great players in the game brought to this event, it seems like that's a bit of a theme. And now this is an excellent opener here for Miloslav. It looks like he will be going first and has started that Cleffa with that excellent grasping draw attack immediately, benching a Teal Mask Ogre Pond, using Teal Dance, attaching an energy card in order to draw one card. He's got an Ultra Ball in hand and quite a few Dragon Pokemon that he really would like to get into the discard pile. Yeah, Ultra Ball, perfect synergy. Get those dragons out early so that Reggie Drago can start copying those attacks. Very interesting inclusion of the Hizuyan Gudra V-Star. We've been talking about what's the standardized Reggie Drago list. Clefa definitely a unique choice. Also missing from Needle's Lab is Fizz and DPTX, which I'm very surprised, that actually. It's like one of the best cards, in my opinion, from Shrouded Fable. So it'll be interesting to see why he determined that was not necessary for the tournament. Well, a support Pokemon he has chosen to include, along with many of the other Reggie Drago V-Star players, is that Squawkabilly EX, as we do see that being the choice off the Ultra Ball and hitting the bench right away. It's Squawk and C's ability can only be used on your first turn of the game, but it's very strong. It lets you discard your hand, draw six new cards, and when we're playing a game where the current rule set does not allow for a supporter to be played on the very first turn of the game. It's just one of the best options in the format in order to see tons of cards in the early turns. It is so good, and it can also be a liability, right? So choosing to play it really, need, the rewards really need to offset the risk that you're uh, getting there. There are some decks, such as Guard of War, that can really take advantage of those sort of Pokemon, but not this time around. Miloslav will use that Earthen Vessel, grabbing just one single Fire Energy. I think this is pretty smart here. Put it in the discard pile, so off of your Squawk and Seize on your next turn when you're looking for a Fire Energy for your Reggie Drago, you have a couple of ways to get it back, right? Oh, certainly. This deck uh, thrives on discarding things, right? Because Legacy Star gets energy back or gets anything back from the discard pile. You have Superior Energy Retrieval as well. You have uh, the advantage of copying attacks from a discard pile, so the discard pile and the interaction with all the other cards is so, so key for this deck's success. And I think we may see the discard of that fire energy pay off immediately here for Miloslav. He has not attached an energy for turn yet, and he did draw into the brand new Night Stretcher card. Pretty unique recovery option. We see quite a few of these Reggie Drago decks, some of the Raging Bolt decks utilizing it. You can choose to either bring back a Pokemon from your discard pile and put it into yep. your hand, or an energy card. And sure enough, Fire Energy brought back with the Night Stretcher attached to the Reggie Drago V, and even an energy switch to move that energy. And I believe Miloslav has a research in hand, also has a Reggie Drago V Star. He is having a very threatening open to this game. And Ross on the other side, we haven't really uh, talked too much about what's going on. Probably one of the weaker starters there, that Iron Leaves EX. Yes, usually you would love to use the Iron Leaves to take down that Squawk. Uh, I think a very key concept we're going to see here is the 2-2-2 two, two, two prize trade-off. Both players are going to try and take two prizes. Uh, that Cleffa is really not a liability for Milslav because even if Ross knocks it out, then Milslav simply doesn't bench another single prize Pokemon and he'll be perfectly fine. So um, 
I do think Ross has an opportunity here to be extremely aggressive, utilizing Iron Bundle perhaps to force a switch and try to initiate that 2 2 price trade off. But the HPs are decently high of Mila's last Pokemon for now. Yeah, Ross could reach for a knockout this turn technically, but it would be a massive amount of resources in order to pull that off. He does have a full four energy switch. We know one is prized. So with that Teal Mask Ogre Pond, I mean, we most often see it being utilized for its excellent Teal Dance ability, but its attack is extremely strong as well, dealing 30 damage plus 30 more damage for each energy card between both Pokemon. I think another important thing to consider here is like Milslav made all these decisions without really knowing what Ross Cawthon is playing so far, right? He only sees an Iron Leaves EX in the active and historically speaking, the only deck that has been playing Iron Leaves as of late is Giratina Vistar. So maybe he's expecting that based on what he's seen, but Ross is going to uh, surprise him here a little bit with the Teal Mask bench. Yeah, the, the Leaves has popped up, I think, a little bit in some of these Reggie Drago lists as well. You see it from some of the Japanese players. I know there was a, a, a pretty big event that happened over in Japan where that was kind of revealed as a popular tech choice. For Ross, it will be the Teal Dance, attaching the energy card, drawing one more, turning through the deck here. Can't quite get a good read on his hand here. What do you think he's got over there, Pablo? Yeah, so he's got uh, Rare Candy, which is not really useful right now. He wants that to evolve into Dust Noir. He's got a Neutral. He's got a Thornton as well, a Pokestop, but not super useful cards to have right now. Those are like late game resources that um, would come useful then, so it's going to be harsh to have to discard them through the Squawk and Seas that's likely coming up here. Yeah, definitely not cards you want to see early in the game. Ross is actually only playing one copy of Rare Candy, and he's got a really interesting Pokemon lineup here as well. One Duskull, one Dusclops, and two Dusknor. What's going on there, Pablo? <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that has to do with the odds of, like, you don't want to start Duskull, right? And ideally in his game plan, he only ever benches one Duskull throughout the whole game, so that his opponent can't take advantage of taking out two single price Pokemon, but with two Tusknoir, you compensate a little bit for discards, you increase your chance of drawing the card naturally just because you have two copies instead of having to Ultra Ball for it. So that's sort of the logic behind that. You see that Squawkabilly EX hit the bench, attachment for turn to the active uh, Iron Leaves and Pokestop in play before the use of Squawk and Seas, discarding the Night Stretcher, drawing six new cards now. Saw at least another energy card. Is there an out to another Teal Mask Ogre Pond EX? I do think we see that Forest Seal Stone, but is there a Shaman V? There isn't one right now. The Iron Bundle hitting the discard mm. ball as well is actually pretty bad for Ross. I think one game plan you could have here is perhaps use the bundle, try to energy switch enough energy to this, and probably hit like 180 here, and then snipe that eventually yeah. with Dust Clubs' ability. So discarding the Dust Call and discarding the Iron Bundle is bad news for Ross Cotton here. Definitely not ideal. For Seal Stone hitting the discard pile off this research, as well as one of the two Shaman V-Star that Ross is playing. Seven cards to draw. Looks like the other Teal Mask Ogre Pond was able to be found. At least one energy switch. Bug Catching Set, kind of an interesting card to see being played here. Yeah, sort of more powerful Great Ball, more powerful Energy Lodo, very specific for Grass-type Pokemon, which coincidentally are all in Ross's deck. So I think now he'll be able to piece something out, but the big piece missing is a Night Stretcher potentially to get back both the Duskull and that Iron Bundle to do something significant this turn. And Ross is playing three Night Stretcher. We talked about it a little bit on Miloslav's turn, the power that that card can offer and it's really strong in this deck as well it seems like you want to have energy in your hand after they go to the discard pile so you can continue to draw with the teal mask ogre pond ex you also can get back dust skull if a situation ever came up you wanted another dust nor if you mill a dust nor or a dust clops off of the pokestop you can retrieve it in that way really cool use of some of the new cards here from ross coffin now i gotta wonder if middle slab is pulling like a poker face right now trying not to read the shame in V. I'm not exactly <laughs> sure how many players actually know exactly what the card does, but it's Revenge Blast Attack. Maybe he knows, oh. right? Ross played the bug catching set and got no hits. Oh, yep. thing. Dang. Such a good card for these grass type decks. He does have quite a few of his grass Pokemon and has seen a few energy cards already, so maybe it wasn't the highest odds to get a hit, but seven cards, you feel like you would hit at least a grass Pokemon or one energy, at least something. Something would have been great here for Ross, especially the grass, as you mentioned, Chip. 
could have maybe pieced out an attack, but I think his deck is running a little bit out of gas at this point, and it's going to be tough to do anything significant. Will be the pass, and right over to Miloslav, who instantly will evolve into the Reggie Drago V-Star and plays Professor's Research, discarding both copies of the Dragapult EX. I don't think you could ride it up much better. All Miloslav needing to pull off an attack this turn is a Grass Energy card, which uh, doesn't have immediately in hand, but he's got plenty of ways to find it. Earth and Vessel going to be pretty key, also has potentially Legacy Star, but I think the timing of the Legacy Star use is very key to this deck's success. It looks like it will be that Earth and Vessel being played, debating what card to discard here. We'll get rid of one of the Teal Mask Ogre Pawn. Miloslav is just playing three copies of the card that seems like... Oh no, sorry, he is actually playing four copies. Yeah. A lot of people have gone down to three to try to make space for all these new unique cards from the most recent expansion, but Miloslav sticking with the four. It is just one of the best, most important pieces of the engine of this deck. Does find a fire energy and a grass energy card. There is already another Teal Mask Ogre Pond in the hand. We'll see how he approaches things here. Now he's got an interesting choice here, Pablo, because he could use Teal Dance to draw a card and he has energy switch in hand, so he could guarantee it, but he also could just attach to the Reggie Drago V-Star. Is there any reason to do one over the other? I mean, it all comes down to resource conservation, right? If you draw that extra card, how impactful will that extra card be? Do you really need anything else at this point? Or is the energy switch better left unused in order to be utilized later down the line to power up a secondary Rage Drive of V-Star? I think that's pretty important. Seems like Middleslav will choose to use that energy switch. Not sure if he has uh, another Rage Drago. He does, okay. Wow. So Pretty good. Yeah, the energy attachment going to Reggie Drago, the grass to the V-Star. Picture perfect start, honestly, for me. I don't think he could have asked for anything better than this. Perhaps a boss or a prime catcher right now to target down either Shaman or the energy powered up. Uh, He's got a couple of options here for what attack to go with. There's that Hisui and Gudra V-Star sticking out to the side. There's also Dragapult EX, which is one of the best ways to get a bunch of damage into play. As the Pokestop does discard three non-item cards. What do you think here would be the best attacking option for Miloslav in this spot? I mean, he's probably still questioning a little bit what exactly Ross has going on in his deck. Yep, I think if you want to be super careful, you might choose to use Hizuya and Gudra V-Star's attack, but if you want to go in the offensive, as we see the Gudra choice, you could easily just, like, take down the Verizon. Uh, sorry, the Iron Leaves EX with Giratina V-Star, but choosing the safer route, just really finding out what Ross is up to, and he can pick that off eventually with a Dragapult uh, Phantom Dive. 200 damage being thrown on to that Iron Leaves EX. Just 20 HP remaining. Should be easy work for Miloslav to clean up in future turns with a Dragapult EX attack. Ross here really needs to find a way to make something happen this turn. It's going to be kicked off with the Pokestop. Does discard a Grass Energy, but able to find an Earthen Vessel and an Ultra Ball. That should unlock some potential here. Should indeed. Now, there are not too many ways for Ross to recover Grass Energy other than those Night Stretchers, right? So the Night Stretchers really need to put in a lot of work, but you need the Dust Goal, you need the Dust Noir, uh, you need the Grass Energy. So it could be a little tricky for him, perhaps, uh, to piece a knockout on this uh, Reggie Drago V-Star that is also reducing damage off of Gudra. Ross is not only an extremely smart uh, individual, but an extremely smart Pokemon player, so he's yep. going to be very measured with any actions he takes here, and he's definitely going to be forming a game plan of how he wants to piece together the end of this game. Looks like Earthen Vessel was played, able to grab two Grass Energy from the deck. Scanning through there, not too many resources, it seems like, left for Ross. That Dust Skull hitting the discard pile is kind of a bummer earlier on. He can get it back with the Night Stretcher, but he's going to need to find one. I need to find a little bit more at this point in time. Like, ideally, you want to go 2-2-2 two, two, two for either player, right? That Iron Leaves is almost sentenced at this point because of Phantom Dive. So Roz really needs to perhaps try to target down the bench Reggie Drago or maybe piece enough energies to deal significant damage to the E-Star in the active. The 210 HP is an awkward number for Reggie Drago, right? Like, True. the powerful attacks deal 200 damage, Phantom Dive and Rolling Iron. And sometimes Lost Impact is a little too costly. 
Yeah, there is an opportunity for Milos left to potentially set up a six prize turn, even yeah. you know if Ross does attack with the Teal Mask Ogre Pond here. For one, he's not going to be doing that much damage, right? You can't get over the 80 damage reduction of the Rolling Iron super efficiently. Um, but for Ross, I mean, it feels like he does need to throw some damage into play, most likely, right? He can't wait around and do nothing forever. Yep. And there, oh, no, <laughs> I thought he was going to pick up to read the shame it, but not <laughs> quite. And it looks like Ross is trying to cash in on this Iron Leaves EX in the active spot. Doesn't want to just retreat yep. in order to allow Milislav to pick it off on the bench. And he also has the boss's orders paired with this in order to take two prize cards. So Ross is able to strike first here, going up. Four prizes remaining to six. Powerful Prism Edge onto that Squagabill EX to get ahead in the prize cards and avoiding a potential Phantom Dive unless Miloslav gets a boss's orders or a prime catcher. So trying to ask as much as he can of his opponent and then Shaman Vistar being now relatively threatening, right? We do have that Revenge Blast. If Miloslav ended up piecing out a four price turn, then that would make it a really big threat. And Miloslav has not used Legacy Star just yet, so he's got plenty of options here. Just a few cards in hand, thinking through exactly what he wants to go for. Checking the discard pile to make sure he knows what resources he will have the option to retrieve. Prime catcher play could be pretty strong, and it does look like he actually even has the Professor's Research in the hand. Perhaps wanting to find the boss's orders this turn, he will choose to discard that Professor's Research with an Ultra Ball, and it will be Mew EX grabbed. Miloslav's deck is already looking extremely thin. A lot of strong cards still remaining. Yeah, that restart ability will help him get to some of those very powerful cards. I think uh, Miloslav choosing to just have a Mew on the bench and no Fist and TPTX being played. So that's his only way to recover from potential Iono eventually happening, which restart is good, but I'm not sure it's as good as Fist and TPTX. And that could be something that Ross is planning. Just try to make Miloslav with a crucial energy, a crucial something at some point to pull uh, more ahead in this game. Miloslav even counting the number of cards remaining in deck, and it looks like we will see that Legacy Star utilize. Oh no, Pokestop first, yep. flipping those cards, and Prime Catcher was able to be found. Superior Energy Retrieval will bring back up to four energy cards from the discard pile to the hand. At least one Grass Energy being discarded earlier. It looks like another as well. It's still both Ogre Ponds having been used, this uh, having not been used, this situation is looking extremely good for Miloslav. He's going to jump ahead here for two prizes on this Squawkabilly. Could even take the four prize turn if he wants it. Yeah, I think that's what we're seeing. Phantom Dive, knock out the Squawk, two damage counters on the Iron Leaves, and then four damage counters remaining. Going to go one, one, and two, I believe, on the Ogre Pond, setting them up perfectly for a knockout. It will allow Miloslav to go down to two prizes remaining, and... Both Raging Dragon V stars almost threatening the lost impact for game on anything that Ross Cotton has at this point. Yeah, this situation is looking pretty tough for Ross to come back from. I think we see the potential of his deck. It doesn't look like he's going to quite be able to piece it together here in this game, and it seems yep. like he agrees. Ross making a smart concession here. He wants to make sure he has plenty of time for hopefully a game two in game three. Miloslav getting the win in game one. Yeah, very smart concession right there for Ross. Very... Um, Decisive win for Miloslav here. His deck worked perfectly to the T. Did not miss a beat. Didn't even have to use the Legacy V Star. And like when your opponent is down to two prize cards, they have two Regi Dragos set up. They have Legacy V Star to just get back one grass to threat the lost impact. Things could not have gone better for him in this first game. Yeah, shuffling up here for game number two. And when the hype was surrounding that chip, I think you'll agree that uh, all the focus was on Dragapult EX, but turns out Teal Mask Ogre Pony X was the real star of that. Yeah, and it's it's even true for Raging Bolt as well, another deck that has yeah. you know, popped up and, and become extremely strong after the release of Teal Mask Ogre Pond. I mean, it turns out attaching extra energy for turn and drawing extra cards makes for a pretty good combination. Now Ross is kicking things off with the Nest Ball. Has started the Squawkabilly EX, which is not too bad, honestly. You want to get it in play generally, use that Squawk and Seize on turn one. He will want to get it out of the active spot eventually, but he knows that Miloslav cannot be aggressive and, you know, do something like a Raging Bolt player could do, take two prizes on turn one. Yeah, at best you could attack for 130 with Rage Rao B, but nothing too, too impactful. Now, 
we did see Ross's prizes on screen. One Shamian V Star being prized, the Palpat being prized as well. Could mess with any potential important plays that he wanted to make. And over on Milotov's side, he does have the Squawk Ability EX prize, so that could lead to a slower start depending on what he has in his hand. Can't really tell if he has a support or not, but usually with the with four Nest Ball, four Ultra Ball Squawk is super good, but if you don't have access to that, it can cause your deck to have like a little bit of a hiccup, if you will. Well, this is kind of awkward here for Ross as well. He's got the option to use Squawk and Seize, but he's got two supporters in his hand and also two of his three Night Stretchers. So we're going to see he's choosing to actually hold off on that hand, not discarding those precious resources. What do you think of that, Pablo? I think the Night Stretchers are so, so key in order to potentially use Dust Noir and Dust Gloves multiple times, perhaps even the Iron Bundle, right? You just take down Pokemon on the bench, you never worry about a Regidrago V-Star, so I think Ross is really valuing that, and this also is information that Middleslav gains indirectly, right? You have a squad, and you're choose on turn one, and you're choosing not to use it, that means your hand is super good. Miloslav here has a pretty good hand. Speaking of, you know, we were a little worried about the potential of the prized Squawk Ability on his end. He's not going to need it. He's got research. Yep. Got the fire uh, energy through the Earthen Vessel. He's got the discard of the Dragapult, and he's already got Reggie Drago V. This is looking pretty strong. Now, it maybe is a little awkward to see both Earth, uh, two copies of Earthen Vessel this early. You know, it's a pretty nice resource to have on the other end of a research, so you can discard your Dragon type Pokemon to copy with the Apex Dragon attack so that you can find your energy cards in order to Teal Dance into play, but overall an extremely strong start already for Miloslav. I agree, Chip, incredibly strong. And is it gonna be another picture perfect situation for him? Even energies in the Discord Barrel are not a bad idea because you have superior energy retrieval, you have the nice stretcher that you talked about earlier, so you get to thin the deck as well. You already have your main attacker in the Discord Barrel. Things are looking very, very good for Miloslav here. Yeah, has an option here off this Ultra Ball to either grab another Reggie Drago V, another Teal Mask Ogre Pony X, or just another Dragon Pokemon to put into the discard pile. Something like the Hisuian Hudra V Star could be an option. And it looks like Reggie Drago V will be the choice. Pretty sure I did see another one in hand, so he wants yep. to really prioritize getting two of those in play. Yeah, I think Meagles Lab at this point has enough information to make the educated guess or the calculated guess that. His V-Star is probably a little bit more powerful than Ross Gossens' V-Star in the early game, and he just wants to play it super safe, right? Just get to down. If one goes down, well, I have the backup of the other one to go ahead. He'll probably dedicate two energies and, like, the energy attachment, the energy switch to the main Regi Drago, but it never hurts to have the backup immediately off the bat. And, yeah, this is the debate he's having. Does he go all in on one? Does he spread the resources? How does he go about this? Yeah, and the risk of putting too many energy on one is that the Teal Mask Ogre Pony X on Ross's side could potentially reach for a knockout with that Myriad Leaf Shower. And so we yep. see Miloslav being extremely conservative, extremely careful here, choosing to use that energy switch to move the energy over to the other Reggie Drago V. Off of the Professor's Research has a fresh hand of seven here. Doesn't seem as excited about this hand as he did the previous one. He has a research, he has a V-Star, missing energies perhaps, or energy switches, but he also has access to Legacy Star if he really needs to. Of course, all Reggie Drago V-Star players try to set up without using their V-Star, that's the dream, but sometimes if you have to do it, then you might as well do it. Ross using his Ogre Pond's Teal Dance to throw an energy into play, and it will be the Iono utilized. He did have the Iron Bundle in hand, choosing not to put it into play. Like you mentioned earlier, you know, he really only wants to have one one prize Pokemon available yep. to his opponent to KO at any time. So even though Iron Bundle can sit on the bench for a while, be utilized later in the game potentially, he doesn't want to give his opponent that option to, to take that odd prize. It would lock him out of using his Dust Gold. Perfect analysis, Chip. That is exactly why we did not see that Iron bun Bundle hit the bench. It seems like it would be counterintuitive perhaps to go after that instead of the two prize attackers. However, uh, if Miloslav now has information of the Tosnoir, he knows that's how Ross Cousin can really push his damage output to do even more damage. Now, I don't think 210 is reachable for him at this point, but this is where the Iron Leaves could come into play for Ross if he has a way to find it. He still has an energy to attach for turn. Could just get some damage in play with the Myriad Leaf Shower, setting yeah. up for a Dusknoir, Dusklops KO. 
potentially in the future, and it looks like that's what he's going to value here, just getting that damage into play, 120 placed onto the Teal Mask Ogre Pawn EX. Yeah, not the most impactful damage overall, but that's because Needle's Last Ogre Pawn doesn't have any energy attached to it. Maybe Leaf Shower does do more damage for energy attached to both Pokemon, not just um, itself. We see Miloslav using that active Teal Dance, drawing Ooh. a card. He's got an energy switch in hand, using Teal Dance once more with the benched Ogre Pawn and a second nice Retro Dragon V Star. Wow, what a setup here. Now, Miloslav did have the hand Iono to the bottom, so he didn't actually have access to Retro Dragon V Star anymore, so a very nice thing to see him draw. We know there's some pretty powerful resources on the bottom of the deck, so. Possibly this is a game where Miloslav is going to have to use that Legacy Star a little earlier. We didn't see him use it at all in game number one. He was able to save it and would have had the option to use it if Ross disrupted his hand. Yeah. So Miloslav might have to go aggressive with it here to pull off the attack. Let's see what he pieces together. I think he might have just enough to... Oh, no, he's missing a Grass Energy. You're right. Yeah. Well, remember, one of the Ogre... Uh, oh, one of right, the right. Reggie yeah. Dragon oh, on the bench has, has the Grass Energy. Yeah. Right, yeah. He actually has just enough to get by without using the V-Star. He might still do it anyways if he's trying to plan something different. Now, I do want to highlight how, at this point, Miloslav doesn't have Halucha's flying entry ability, which would be perfect if you Ooh. do 200 damage to the Ogre Pond. What did you see, Chip? Yeah, he actually chose to evolve the Regidrago oh. that has the fire energy on it. If he had evolved the other one, he's got yeah. fire energy in hand. Yeah, yeah. With the energy switch, that would have set him up to be able to attack. Now he's in a situation where he's going to need to draw a grass energy, which he does not have yet. And I think this pause he just had might have been, um, unless he's dedicating the energy to the Ogre Pond and going to use Ogre Pond to deal with Ogre Pond, that's a way to save your V-Star, right? Uh, make sure you get the guaranteed knockout. Yeah, I think that's exactly what we're seeing. We wow. see the grass transferred to the Ogre Pond, and it's Ogre Pond versus Ogre Pond. Yeah, bring me back to 2012 with the Mewtwo battles yeah. back in the day, right? <laughs> seeing two of the best Pokemon EX, basic Pokemon EX in the format, just laying into each other. And it will be Miloslav now in this game taking the first KO. As the Myriad Leaf Shower will be dealing more than enough to take out Ross's own Teal Mask Ogre Pond EX. Up to 140 damage total, I do believe. And Millsap did hit an Iona off of, the, of Mew EX's restart. This time it's Millsap who gets the first two prizes, leaving Ross Gotham's board very bare bones. No energy in play, no real threat, and really needing to have an extra Ogre Pond to get the return KO, right? But it's going to come down to perhaps setting up the Dust Ward to pick up this Ogre Pond eventually to right. turn things around. So Ross is behind, but he has all the tools necessary to potentially pull ahead still. Yeah, and I think it was a really smart play from Miloslav last turn. Could have gone in with the Regidrago, but didn't have a great way to get the knockout, right? I don't even think that the Giratina EX, uh, or sorry, V-Star, is in the discard pile. So you could have hit for 200, you know, set up some damage on the bench, get a little more damage in play. But this is Miloslav attacking Ross's board in the sense of taking yeah. all those energy out of play, as you mentioned. Now yeah, Ross sometimes here. if your opponent has enough things on the board, you focus on establishing a powerful position. But here, eliminating three energies, Ross's only attacker, even the double teal dance ability to potentially power up a backup attacker, all of that influences Milovlap's decision, as you mentioned, Chip. Now, Ross was able to find a nest ball, which can grab the Shaman V. And he does have that Forest Seal Stone in the hand, I believe also a Professor's Research. So he's going to have quite a few cards to work with here. But he needs a lot to respond to this Teal Mask Ogre Pond. I mean, he's going to have to set up yet another Teal Mask Ogre Pond if he wants to take two prizes this turn. Now, Revenge Blast at this point in time doesn't do enough damage. Milzlav has taken two prizes, so Revenge Blast will deal 140. Not quite enough, but the Forest Seal Stone seems like a pretty key card here. Ross is holding a counter catcher in his hand, so he might choose to go after something else, perhaps the Mew. That opens up a potential Iron Leaf ZX knockout, and then you use the Dust Noir to pick off the Ogre Pond, and then you only need to take the last two prizes with a powerful Shaman Vista attack. This research is going to be a big one, Chip. And he is able to find that Iron Leaves, has a Grass Energy, but does need a little bit of help. I think we're going to yep. be relying on what is drawn here from the Teal Dance and potentially the Pokestop. Another energy switch not helpful at this point. May come down to the Pokestop here. Can Ross find an Earthen Vessel? I think that is the card he needs to hit. 
We know he's got the V-Star power left, so we can see it yeah. guaranteed through the Star Alchemy. Uh, and this was a pretty smart counter catcher, I think, from Ross. Obviously, he would have liked to have taken out Miloslav's energy in play, kind of similar to what Miloslav did to him on the last turn. But he recognizes that's going to be a little difficult to achieve. I'd need so many energy switch. So we do see energy switch and bug catching set found on the Pokestop. By bringing up the Mew EX, like you mentioned, that Iron Leaves is now an option. Only one energy hit from the bug catching set. Not the most impactful. It gives him a little bit more wiggle room, but still needs to find another Ogre Pond and another energy to have the potential for Iron Leaves. And Forest Seal Stone can get you one, but it can't get you both. So perhaps you have to dedicate it to a Nest Ball to establish with DPTX to get three cards. Mm. The issue is Ross needs two cards and he can only guarantee one right now. And we see the wheels are turning here. Yeah. Ross thinking through the odds. What is the best play? And it may come down to that Pheasantipity. Looks like it will be that V-Star power utilized. Let's see if that brand new Pokemon EX from Shrouded Fable is the grab. Secret that. Box is in the deck as well. Yeah, Secret Box is an option, right? It's an aspect that we don't commonly see, but would that guarantee it? Not quite, not to this point. Thinking through the options here, it may just come down to the Pheasantipity, which feels tough because you need two of the three cards drawn off Flip the Script to be a very specific card. You need an out to the Ogre Pond, and you need an energy card. Well, I think Ross chose a Teal Mask Ogre Pond EX, so he's going to risk it on the one. He's choosing one of the cards he needs, right? And now he needs the Teal Dance to find a uh, Night Stretcher, yeah. an Earthen Vessel, yep. uh, an actual Grass Energy, the Pheasantipity, the Nest Ball. So a lot of outs a here. A lot of options here for Ross. Yeah, this is going to be a massive draw. This is going to determine if Ross can pull off a KO this turn. Teal Dance for one, and the find is the Dusk Noir, I believe. Yep, Dusk Noir drawn. Nothing else to do in terms of drawing cards. Shaman. Wow doesn't do enough damage. He can't even retreat into it, like, realistically. Does bench the Dust Skull, which could potentially help, but missing the attack here is wow. huge. Yeah, I think Ross very much would have been in this game if he had pulled off the attack this turn for two prizes. Not being able to do that here is going to make things pretty difficult, I think. But if there's anyone who can find a way back into the game, it's definitely Ross. But Miloslav, on his end, is going to do everything he can to eliminate those options. You know, make sure whenever you're ahead in a game, a very common thing you see from these players is they just ask themselves, okay, how do I lose this game? And yep. make sure that they always play as safely as possible. And one way you could do it is if you go overly aggressive with your V-Star, you go overly aggressive with your resources. And that's exactly what we saw from Miloslav last turn, right? He dedicated resources to a one kill, but he has a backup Rage Dragon V-Star with a low amount of energy, so it's not threatened by a Teal Mask and has access to a V-Star to just accommodate to any situation that presents itself. And the fact that the knockout was missed by Ross gives Miloslav a huge advantage here. Now, Miloslav m would have to use Boss's Orders or Prime Catcher to take two prizes this turn, either on the Shaman V or the Squawk ability, as we do see three cards hit from the Pokestop, immediately using Earthen Vessel to discard the Nest Ball, finding energy cards. Um, so he does need to piece some things together, but with Legacy Star and with now all these energies being found, uh, he's going to have plenty of options, I think. Not many grass energy left, as we just saw. So that could be something that... I feel like that pause that Millsap did, put one grass, then pause, then chose the fire, that gives perhaps your opponent a little bit of information and, oh, okay, maybe they don't have all the grass energies, but does have energy switch, has enough energy in play to where he could generally just have... Um, uh, lost impact knockout, and he's just going to target down the Shaman V here. It will be the boss's orders bringing Shaman V to the active spot, and its revenge blast attack is potentially extremely strong, but didn't have enough time to stick in play for a turn to evolve into Shaman V Star. Shaman V Star has a little bit beefier 250 HP, it gets to hang around. Not the case here as Apex Dragon able to copy the rolling iron, taking two prizes. Getting rid of Ross's Shaman V, and this is a really tough situation Ross finds himself in. Got the Dusk Skull. We know Dusk Nor is in hand. If he has maybe the rare candy, 
Perhaps he can piece something together here, but it is certainly going to be an uphill battle from this point. Yeah, very candy dust or it could take down this and then enough energy somewhere, but it's gonna be very difficult to piece something here for Roz. Doesn't have a lot of just things in play. Ross does have another counter catcher available, so I'm trying to think maybe he can piece together an Iono play, something like that, but no, actually even looks like the counter catcher is prized and Ross recognizes I can't win from this position. Extends the fist, and it will be Miloslav getting the win here in round two at the World Championships. I don't think we saw Ross's match really, or Ross's deck rather, really work to its full potential. Uh, I, Ross is a good friend of mine. I helped him practice a little bit for his World Championship. His deck definitely uh, can pull things through a lot better. But yeah, this is tough, right? Raging Drago just has a lot of HP, has a lot of versatility in its attack. And that's why it's the most popular and arguably the best deck in the format today. And I think both of those games from Miloslav are a perfect example as to why this deck is so popular. It has so many options and it is pretty consistent as well. Uh, and Reggie Drago V-Star has so much HP. It's pretty wild, you know, how much this deck got thrown onto the map after a top 16 finish at the North American International Championships. You know, before NAI 